Hey, this is Kevin, and you're listening to the second episode of Kevin's Math and Science Podcast. So today's topic is Monte Carlo simulations. When trying to define Monte Carlo simulations, a quote from the Supreme Court on pornography came to mind. You know it when you see it. This is because it's hard to find a good definition, but the basic principle of Monte Carlo simulations is that they use a large amount of random sampling or random tests to find some large aggregate property of the system. Let's demonstrate a Monte Carlo simulation by using it to find the value of pi. Imagine drawing a circle inscribed in a square. If we assume we don't know pi, but we do know two things, then we can use Monte Carlo methods to solve this problem. The first thing we need to do is to define pi, which for our purposes is the ratio of a circle's area to its radius squared. We also know that the circle's area equals the square's area times the percent of the square inside the circle. When we combine these two equations, we get the formula for pi at the bottom of the screen, which we will be using for these Monte Carlo simulations. Notice that we know the radius of the circle and the area of the square, since we drew them. We don't know the percent area that the circle occupies in the square, and this is truly the unknown that we will be solving for with the simulation. The formula we'll be using for pi is that pi equals the area of the square divided by the radius squared times the percent of the square's area occupied by the circle. This is what we will actually be simulating to find. We will do the computational equivalent of randomly tossing a stone into the square. The percent of times that the randomly tossed stone lands in the square approaches the real percent area of the circle as the number of tosses increases to infinity. This is what you are looking at now. On the top you see a square with the circle inside it in green. The stone just tossed is in red and all previous tosses are in blue. Then on the graph below you see the predicted value of pi as a function of the number of random tosses. The blue line is the predicted value, while the green line is the actual value of pi, 3.14, etc. Notice that at first you start far from the predicted value, slowly moving closer, but with large oscillations up and down. Eventually you might even reach 3.14, but you'll overshoot and then undershoot because of the oscillations. As the number of iterations increases, the oscillations dampen, and by the time you get to 10,000 tosses, the Monte Carlo simulation seems to be asymptotically approaching the real value of pi. What's so cool is that from completely random tosses, we can get a really good estimate of pi. For something random, from something random, we can get a deterministic property, in this case, pi. Another example of Monte Carlo simulations is what we looked at last week, the Brownian motion of particles. Remember we showed five randomly moving or Brownian particle trajectories starting at the center. Just like when we calculated pi, at only five iterations we don't get any real sense of the information. Then, when instead of simulating five particles we simulate 500, we do see something interesting. We see that random motion looks a lot like diffusion, like a drop of dye into a dish of water, a slow dissipation of gradients as the molecules spread out. This is one way that Monte Carlo simulations can give us interesting information about particles. We see that when particles move randomly, you get diffusion. Monte Carlo simulations are used in everything from complex molecular simulations to financial modeling to understanding how viruses spread. In fact, Monte Carlo simulations were named after the island of Monte Carlo because of the casinos using Monte Carlo simulations to understand their profits. This makes sense because there are thousands of games, each with thousands of possible outcomes, and people can play or not play any of those games. So randomly simulating hundreds of trajectories of players playing different games can give you a clue of what you can expect, where you couldn't really add up all of those possibilities. This is the essence of Monte Carlo simulations. They are typically used when the total number of possible outcomes is too large for computation. You would then use Monte Carlo simulations to select just a few of those outcomes to see what you could expect from your system. So that's it for today. Thanks for listening to today's podcast.